Hi, everybody. I'm Tim Estilos, and I'm here with Carlos Lopez Estrada, who made his directorial debut with 2018's Blind Spotting. And more recently, he directed Disney's Raya and the Last Dragon. But today, we're here to talk about his new film called Summertime, and we're here with Carlos. Carlos, it's a pleasure to chat with you. Tim, thank you so much for having me. I have to tell you, I really enjoyed this film. It's so unique in the process and the way it's put together. It involves sort of a day in the life of Los Angeles as told through the eyes of 27 youth poets. Tell me how this unique project came together. I went to see a spoken word showcase with all 27 of these poets. And I remember just walking out of that experience feeling really changed uh there, there was something about their voices there was something about their poetry so i came back a few days later to the director of the organization and i proposed this idea of adapting their poetry into a film little did i know that a few months later we were going to be all workshopping this this film together and because the poets were all most of them were graduating high school and about to start college or jobs, or, you know, their other life ventures, we only had the summer to put it together, which means that uh, I met them in April, we had May, June, July, and August, uh, four months to conceive, write, structure, pre-produce, and shoot the movie, which is, you know, uh, very unusual. Tell us what this film is all about, because it's very unique in the structure of it and the fact that you just had these poets to basically tell the story. What type of story are they telling? The prompt that we gave them was, this is a movie that's going to take over one day in Los Angeles, and we want you to bring, each of you is going to write and perform your individual scenes. We're going to put the whole thing together. So once we have all the scenes, we're going to find ways of connecting them and structuring the film. They each brought poetry. They each brought um, scenes. They brought ideas of how, what they wanted to explore. And then we spent the next few months just trying to piece this giant puzzle together. Well, for them, I, I was looking at some of the, the press videos that gave us a background behind the scenes. And yeah. a number of the actors, or not, rather a number of the poets, didn't have that acting experience that you just alluded to. Was that a big challenge for them to overcome? And how did they do so? There are so many transferable skills because they're all performers and they have been doing, you know, hours and hours and hours of spoken word in front of audiences. But they also didn't have a lot of the experience that professional actors have. So it, it, I think it was a balance of both of giving, giving them just enough um, information so that they felt comfortable in front of the camera so that they could, you know, do multiple takes and sustain a, a three week long shoot. We wanted their performances to feel like really natural and we wanted them to bring themselves onto the movie. So we, we, we tried to, to walk that line between preparing them, but not over preparing them and allowing them to just exist. The way that they tell their stories, they're also bringing a very unique perspective to this film because they're telling their stories as young people in Los Angeles, which is not always an easy place to navigate, whether it's seeking a career or just living life in Los Angeles. What I, I love the most about the movie is that it shows you LA through perspectives that we don't really get to see very often. This is really the city as captured through 27, really diverse, really layered and complex points of view. So I, I, I hope that people who watch the movie walk away with a different understanding of LA and, and hopefully one that is really inspiring and, and uh, really diverse. Now, for you as a Mexican-American director, you know, we've we've all spoken uh, about how it's hard to get Latino stories told. How has your experience been? And uh, perhaps what hope do you have for that improving? The real hope is that in in telling stories like Summertime, in in highlighting voices like the poets, we we contribute to this really important conversation that is happening around representation and around diversifying our, our industry just because the stories that that we capture in this movie are important, are necessary, and should deserve all of the 
focus and attention that any other type of story from LA has gotten for a really, really long time. So I, I hope that we're contributing to a movement that will sort of like change the way that representation in film uh, is understood. I, I, I hope that by me being the director and producer of the movie, by having all these uh, writers as stars and as authors of the film, I hope that we just continue to push this, uh, this ball forward and, and people just find less and less excuses to not support uh, stories coming from minority communities. Final quick question for your quick answer. Give your best pitch to the audience out there why they should see this film. <laughs> uh, I think they should see this movie because it is a city as captured by 27 different young voices. And I feel like the, the empathy that it, it should generate, hopefully generates in audiences is empathy that is very needed today. I feel like, I feel like opening up our perspectives and allowing other angles to shape how we see the world uh, is probably one of the more important things that we can do. And hopefully this movie does that. So for, for that reason alone, uh, I, I think that it's, it's a worthwhile experience today. The film is called Summertime. It goes in limited release on July 9th and wide on July 16th. So be sure to go out and see it. Thumbs up.